and leave it to contrarian badass Reggie Middleton. He, Reggie walks in looking really cool. He's got a Google Glass on, and I'm like, man, that's cool. And did he walk what did like you? That? Yeah, he walked like that. That's how you walk if you've got <laughs> you Google like Glass that? on. Everyone really? walks real cool. Nuts. He called the housing crash. He called the collapse of Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers. He's been harping on the crisis in the Eurozone banking system for years now, so he's just the guy to talk to. He's Reggie Middleton. Reggie Middleton. <laughs> Reggie Middleton. Oh, he doesn't mince his words. We're talking about Reggie Middleton. Ooh. It's Reggie, Reggie Middleton. Reggie Middleton back once again. Um, the discussion of banks, discussion of technology, the discussion of blockchain implementation. Um, there's our article now. There's a couple of articles. If you go to CoinDesk, you can see uh, the pending uh, patent battle, blockchain. Now everybody's going to file patents. Um, potentially a little late. You can see other articles studying that up to 17% of banks or bank business will be done on the blockchain by 2017, next year. Interesting. Possibly a little optimistic, but believable. The most, um, I guess, uh, dismissed point is blockchain technology is peer-to-peer -peer technology. Okay, it's a peer-to-peer -peer concept. You know, Peter gets to deal directly with Paul. Now, banks, who are basically uh, server-centric entities, they act and stand as a middleman between Peter and Paul, and that's how they get paid, or as an aggregator between Peter, Paula, Paulette, and Paul on the other side, where Paul is a consumer of uh, capital, Peter, Paul, and pa uh, pa Peter, Paulette, and whoever I said before, are uh, savers. So savers put their money into the bank, the bank then takes that capital and lends it to uh, Paul on the other side. This can be done programmatically through the blockchain. That obviates the needs for banks. Now, at least banks on that utility transaction side. Banks can be useful if they charge a very, very small amount of money for that. A very, very small amount of money for that. But you see, that's not what banks do. They actually charge a large amount of money. Now, in the current environment, banks have a problem expanding margins and uh, net interest margin from lending sparse a lot of transaction margin um revenue sparse and margins getting smaller and the risk is still relatively high this is a very very good time for peer-to-peer -peer technology to come to the forefront we believe that we have a significant advantage once it comes to uh inter intellectual property protection uh, we believe we beat and provably many of these entities to the punch we are looking for investors anybody interested you know in jumping on uh, the very small startup, you know, from New York that has beaten everybody to the punch in terms of filing for protection, come reach out to me, okay? You can reach me at Reggie at Veritasium.com or through Twitter, through Facebook, um, any of the usual suspects. Filing deadlines are coming up. Um, a lot of entities are really, really jumping on a bandwagon. Interesting uses. Obviating the obvious peer-to-peer -peer nature of the technology and I think that's by far going to be the most creatively destructive, the most truly disintermediating um, aspect of the blockchain technology. Everybody follows the banks because they believe that's what you need to do. Banks aren't going out of business but in their current form and fashion they will have to morph or evolve or they go to the route of the 8-track tape player or the cassette player or even now the DVD and CD. Okay. Peer to peer, peer directly to Paul. Come see me. Peace.